Hello, I'm Jeff. Uh, as you can tell by my accent, I'm originally from Toronto, but I'm eight years living in Dublin, where most of my closest friends are Swedish. I met them in 2002 in Budapest studying Erasmus program. And Swedes and Canadians, we just get on so well with a love of ice hockey. But I don't actually like ice hockey, but every Swedish person I meet seems to want to talk about Matt Sundin, so I'm happy to talk about Matt Sundin later, if you like. Uh, I actually met him in Stockholm at the Story Hotel when the Iceland volcano went off. I got stuck here. But I'm obviously not here to speak about that. Uh, I'm here with LinkedIn, and later I'll bring up Luke, who is our data scientist. There we go. And uh, we'll go with that. So before I bring up Luke, I'll go through uh, LinkedIn's mission, vision, um, and, and what we as an organization aspire uh, to accomplish. So starting off with... Uh, the mission. The mission of LinkedIn is to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. Uh, this has not changed uh, since I joined the organization six years ago. The vision is to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. Uh, now, a vision is aspirational. Uh, it's ambition. It's your it's your true north. It's what you aspire as an organization. Uh, however. We are in the process of operationalizing this vision. And many thanks to people like Luke and using big data, uh, we're able to map the global economy uh, and something that we call the economic graph. And the reason we're able to do this is we have a digital record of every member of the workforce. Well, currently just over 400 million. We then have a digital profile of every company, the jobs at those companies, the skills required to do those jobs, uh, the educational institutions that provide the skills for those jobs, and the cumulative professional knowledge. So the knowledge of the workers, the companies, um, the educational institution published on our platform. So when you take all these assets, all this capital, this human capital, this intellectual capital, and by virtue of our network, we're able to make that flow, make that work uh, better, uh, we're essentially creating economic opportunity. So let me give you a real life example. Uh, welcome talent .se, or hashtag welcome talent. Uh, this is a project I started working on in the spring with the team here in Stockholm when we were looking at the Syrian refugees who are arriving to Sweden. And we were thinking, what, if anything, can we do in this situation? And historically, when you have mass human migration, what you have is high skilled uh, labor doing low skilled work. Right? You have engineers and doctors driving taxi cabs. Um, and when you looked at the refugees who are arriving in Sweden, right, if we have the, the highly educated professionals in that population doing low-skilled work, that does not benefit the Swedish economy. Uh, it also doesn't benefit the person coming in as much. So what, if anything, can LinkedIn do? So when you go to welcometalent.se, what you'll see is we, we created a microsite where uh, the refugees can go on and learn how to create a LinkedIn profile and, and get some tools and some training. But also companies, we partnered with some companies here in, um, in Sweden to post career opportunities, the internships for the refugees. Um, and currently we have about a couple hundred of them on that site. And by virtue of doing a better job teaching the people coming into Sweden to the opportunities, uh, by not doing a better job of matching that, will will effectively um, uh, impact the lives of the people coming here as well as the Swedish economy. So that's only one effectively small example, uh, personally satisfying example of the economic graph in reality, uh, where we can take these different assets, all this human capital, intellectual capital, and make it work better together. <clears throat> yeah, you got an applause, there we go. <laughs> Data Innovation Summit, going crazy. Um, our member value proposition, so why are the 400 people on LinkedIn? So our value proposition for the individuals is to connect uh, with their professional world, stay informed through the professional news and knowledge, and get hired, build your career. Um, those are why people are on there. And then for companies, uh, we, can, we help a lot of companies hire to find and attract talent to their organizations. We help marketers do B2B as well as B2C marketing to professional audiences. Salespeople can use LinkedIn to manage their network and sell in a way they've never been able to before. And then at work, 
And we have a, a number of products being launched uh, around the person at work and how they work. So, for example, uh, we're launching something for uh, your company lookup. Uh, we're seeing that people in companies look up other people in companies uh, that they work with. And so we can quickly become the, the corporate directory for some of these customers. That's the at work. And for those of you who work with big data, LinkedIn is a dream to work with. So with 414 million members, 37 billion quarterly views, 4 billion endorsements, 7 million active company profiles, and 6 million jobs, uh, there's a lot of ways uh, to look at the data on our platform. And for people like Luke, uh, it's Candyland. He's having a great time. OK, before I bring him up, I'm going to do a bit of fun. This is, you're going to have to work with me. And I know that you're a very extroverted and exciting group. So I want everyone to stand up. Please stand up. OK. This is going to be risky. But we'll have some fun here. All right. Sit down if you don't speak any Danish at all. So if you don't speak any Danish, if you have a little bit of Danish, like you can, you can, you can handle, like, a conversation in Denmark, then Hold down here. All right. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Now, uh, sit down if you do not know how to use Java. If you do not know how to use Java. OK. Sit down if you have no work experience at a multinational company. You never worked at a big company of, say, more than 10,000 employees. All right, I just did a recruitment search here. So I have one, two, three, four, five people who speak Danish, they program in Java, and they have experience at a multinational company. That is the live search. So if anyone's hiring for that type of profile, you lied about some of this, I can tell. Which, what did you lie about, the Danish or the Java? The Danish, okay, yeah, yeah. We, we won't test for that. Uh, so that's essentially what our recruiting platform does right there. It's a live search, so those five people are your candidates if you're, if you're hiring for that. Uh, so I'll bring up Luke to walk you through an initiative we worked on. Essentially, this came from uh, a point in time when I was running a large sales organ organization, about a $100 million business, um, 100 some odd salespeople. And uh, Luke's manager had left. Uh, and Luke was sort of off on his own, not sure what to work on. And so I'm very opportunistic. I sat down. I reviewed everything he was working on. And the project he's about to work, uh, walk you through was incredibly exciting. Uh, and it had a tremendous impact on my business, so much so that uh, we're rolling it out globally. Uh, he's met with Reid Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn. The CEO knows who Luke is. If you ever meet Jeff Weiner and tell him you, you met Luke, he actually knows this 24-year-old from Dublin. Uh, it's an incredibly highly impactful uh, initiative, and I'm delighted to invite Luke up to, to walk us through that. So thank you. Hi, Chef. Give us the old clicker there. Uh, hey, everyone. So uh, I'm here today. Um, so as Jeff said, uh, we used to work together uh, in the SMB business in Dublin. Uh, and essentially what my job was, um, I had 100 relationship managers coming to me uh, almost every day. And they would talk to me about their challenges in their business. Um, and essentially, like it all came down to empowering customer success. How do I make my customers more successful? And so I know there's, there's people that work for Teradata here. There's people from Hadoop, Tableau. Uh, I used to have to juggle between all of those solutions. And I was working crazy hours, like sometimes 68-hour uh, weeks, because I wanted to. I wanted to make a difference. Uh, but at the time, uh, I didn't know how to scale myself. Um, so within the last year, uh, I moved into business analytics. I now lead the EMEA team for Biz Analytics. And essentially, our mission is to create the best in class scalable solutions um, to basically make our internal team members more productive and successful. Um, so, this particular product, okay, um, it's called the Customer Success Solution. Um, what we did was, and I will go into it in more detail, um, we'll do a step by step. I just want to give you an overview of how well it went. Uh, so this solution at the moment is six months old. Uh, so it completely automated my job, uh, automated a lot of jobs of many analysts. Um, so now they're on more kind of interesting, more important things. And so in the last six months that this has been rolled out, just in the me and is now going globally, uh, it has 1,400 users. Um, 
basically, so the traditional model was relationship managers would come to me and would talk about, say, hey, listen, um, I feel that you know we're not meeting expectations. What can I do with their product base to make it more successful? Because we LinkedIn, we we do have very high expectations for people that use our products. Um, so it would be up it would be up to them to come to us. You know what I mean? So it would depend on their workload, like how proactive they'd be. But basically, by using this model, the client help detection, so the people that we could detect that needed help, uh, rose by 300%. Uh, and so another thing, and so we will go through it. So this product, um, first of all, it's really cool. So when a client has our solution up to eight weeks, we can actually tell if they have the right solution, if they're using it the right way, who needs to get involved so in our internal teams to make it more successful and what products need to be changed. That's how strong, well, it's how much data we have at LinkedIn. Um, so like you guys have heard of Kafka today, Kafka, Hadoop, you know, all the stuff that we have, it's, as Jeff said, it's like uh, candy land. So, um, you know, so basically you're going to see at the, end of the at the end of this product, when you come to an action, you can actually download your client specific uh, PowerPoint that will actually talk about your recommendations. So for example, if you wanted to make your jobs more compelling for French engineers, uh, it will actually walk you through the steps on how to do that. So they were downloaded 12,000 times in the last six months. And then finally, um, so we are a public company, so I can't talk about you know, the, the revenue impact, but pretty strong. The impact on our business has been very strong. But what I can say is that the users, so at the moment I said it's very much EMEA-based and it's going global. It's now starting in Neymar and going into uh, Asia-Pac. Um, users are 26% more successful when they use this tool. Uh, and I know a lot of you will ask kind of like, you know, how do you define success? And so for every solution, every segment and every market, we have a marker of what you know, success means when you have a particular type of product on LinkedIn. And as I said, basically 26% more people that hit this product were hitting above that mark, which was absolutely amazing to see when we look back over this uh, in six months. So that's our trademark, so it's the CS solution. Uh, and so business analytics as a team globally, uh, we've been uh, looking at different ways to kind of, you know, help customer success at scale. And so it's really interesting, you know, when I've been kind of, I've been sitting in the corner there uh, watching all the different presentations and uh, I'm not great with names, but I can refer back to, there was a couple of decks that referred to like right now, um, you know, a lot of people make dashboards. Dashboards are the new cool thing. And we make dashboards so that people uh, can tell high execs how they're doing and it can help analysts. But wouldn't it be great to fill that circle around so that it actually helps us make more informed actions to kind of help us be more successful or make more money. Um, and ultimately, that's what this tool does. Um, so, clicker. Okay, so the CS solution is broke down to three different parts. So you've got measure, predict, and action. Um, so for a measure, um, basically, um, as it says, it's for, so globally or for in your individual regions, you can actually measure and track performance. So as I said, in different segments, in different markets, we all have that high expectations. You can see who in your team is hitting that or not, so you can proactively reach out and see what's going on there. Uh, for predict, um, so this is kind of more interesting. We will go into it in more detail. So we have this, uh, we have this. So it's the, the center fold of this tool. Um, and so essentially, when you put your name in, it'll show your account base. And so it'll actually make a prioritization matrix for you, uh, and it'll show you which accounts are a higher priority and what you need to do. You can actually click on each account and actually tell you what you need to do with what product. Um, it really is fantastic. And so we use, just for any of the data nerds out there, um, so that's based, our prediction model is based on random firsts. Uh, and then finally then, the action. So something I've mentioned already, once you've actually found out the, the client that you want to work with, that you want to kind of push and empower them to be more successful, um, the next thing is, like, you know, so how do you reach out to them? What do you need to talk to them about to make them more successful? So that's the action. Um, so the, the measure part, so on basically on the left there you can see, so that's, um, uh, we, I kind of blanked out a lot of things, but essentially how it works is you've got two scenarios. One is uh, on the left is basically a global kind of breakdown, so over the quarters, over the last few months, basically so you can see a trend. But on the right you can actually put in your name, 
uh, or our manager can put in their name and basically they can see who rolls up to them or if it's just your book of business, basically what's a success and what needs to be kind of worked on. Um, so it's just uh, basically a handy research method. Um, so for the predict, um, so this is our main, this is, this is the main tool. Uh, this is what I've worked on over the last uh, uh, six to eight months. And so basically, um, what you have is at the top, so when you log in to the CS solution, uh, it'll open up your book of business. Now on the top, there's a number of different filters. So for example, if you are an EMEA relationship manager or a customer success manager, you can filter by country, filter by market, company size, etc. cetera. Um, when you scroll down, so you see heat map. And so essentially how it works is, um, first of all, they're color coded in terms of priority. And so we'll talk about what makes it a priority and what doesn't uh, in a second. But essentially what you have is you have the, the time frame on the x-axis, so how soon it is to renew, and then the y-axis is the value of the deal. When you scroll over any of these opportunities, you can you know, click on your uh, opportunity link and go straight to your CRM or Salesforce um, and do your research. But ultimately then what you can do is you can scroll down even further. And so that's each individual opportunity in table format. And so what we have is for each individual opportunity, uh, there's four main data points that we are concerned about. And that is rep touch, product usage, product performance, and account information. Um, so um, just to kind of go through them, give you a little bit of an insight. Um, rep touch is essentially like, you mean, so what types of interactions have we had? You know, because this really helps in terms of like, if, if there is an opportunity to improve a specific product, you know, we have different teams that deal with specific products. For example, our jobs, which a lot of you are familiar with, is run by the customer success managers. So we want to see if they've reached out, and if not, you know, why, and what can we do to kind of sort that out. Um, then we have product usage, product performance. So if they're not using the product, why aren't they using the product? What can we do to get them to use it, to get their value out of our solution, to get them to hire their talent? And then product performance. As I said, going back to that expectation, um, you know, have they been hitting that expectation? And then finally, uh, account information. So these are kind of uh, historical data points. So you know, uh, we sat in a room um, with all this data in front of us, and we looked into like you know what kind of factors resulted in success and what didn't. Um, and so that's um, basically the best part about this is that's a high level dashboard for customer success managers and ORMs to kind of run through. These guys are busy, they have a lot of accounts to take care of. If they want to actually research an account, um, they can click on any of those flags. Uh, and so it'll actually give you an exact summary of exactly what happened. Um, so we, we, we feel that you know the, having the option to be able to hit that data um, is extremely important. And just to kind of highlight here, so this solution as it stands, and we'll go through the structure of it, this is bringing so many different sources together, like between Salesforce, between the one click, between Google. You know, there, there's so many different sources of data that are all coming to this. We're using, basically, we're eliminating a lot of time that we traditionally went to research and admin. Um, so onto the next slide. So we, the clicker is a bit. OK, so uh, moving on, um, so this, uh, basically this platform, uh, and it was funny, Goran was uh, speaking to me and saying that uh, in every single conference, uh, we, we always see the iceberg, um, the iceberg slide. But I, I do think it's important that somebody shows it, because ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, all our hard work is underneath the water. Nobody really sees it. What they see is the tip of the iceberg. And there's a lot of different products that we've had, that we've worked with. And there's a lot of you here representing those companies um, that have made us successful in making this tool. Um, and so in business analytics, like we follow the EOI framework. And so uh, E for empower. So that's essentially like to mean how we are looking for data and basically providing data to everyone in our workforce that basically do, helps them do a better job. Um, optimize, uh, basically we, we want to provide data that basically helps, you know, basically pushes our business to the next level, makes our clients more successful. And then innovate, you know, the data that we provide, we're always looking for new things to do. We're always trying to have that quirky kind of side to our data. You know what I mean? Something nobody ever thought of before. Um, and so now onto the kind of cool stuff. So I've just spoke about 
a customer success solution. Um, and it's really important to highlight how many hours it's saving from many different teams. And so, as I said, this tool, now when you use it, you know, people are 26% more successful. Our clients are 26% more successful when their kind of relationship manager uses this tool. Um, basically, there's a lot of work behind it, and I want to kind of go through uh, basically what is behind it and the kind of data that's behind it. Um, so first of all, we have our LinkedIn data. Um, so uh, we've, we've had a few talks today about Kafka. So uh, the, the, the great thing is, um, you know, and just to talk about the kind of data that we have at LinkedIn, uh, Kafka takes a screenshot um, of a number of our tables every 20 minutes um, so that we can see all the different movements that are happening in our markets, with our members, do you know what I mean, with our solutions. Um, so that just kind of goes to how much data we actually have, um, at, you know, to use for this. Um, so then we work with Salesforce, DoubleClick, et cetera. Um, so then kind of moving on, um, so that's all condensed. Um, we bring that into, so I said Kafka will push that into Hadoop. Uh, we'll use Teradata. Uh, anybody that's here with Teradata right now, thank you for doing what you do. Um, my job originally as a sales analyst and my job now would not be as successful as it is without you guys, so thank you. Um, so when we move on to Teradata, then we push it again. And so this is where it gets really interesting. So we use OR. Um, on the, uh, hands up, who actually uses OR here? Or who's familiar with OR? Okay, so uh, that's actually, uh, that's about 20% of the people here. Um, so OR is actually a free solution that you can use. I use this in university. Um, it's really, really simple to use. You actually have OR Studio. Um, if you are going to go near it, um, basically it's a much friendlier interface. And so there's a number of different prediction models that you can use to analyze your data. Um, it's an absolutely fantastic tool. So, and just to kind of stop here at the machine learning end. Um, so in order to kind of make a good forecast, um, in order to make a good prediction, um, you know, looking at our big data, using the likes of OR and cramming loads of CSV files in there, really important. Uh, but what I found, um, it saved me a lot more time, was actually working on the floor. Um, so actually sitting with relationship managers that sat with the clients, that talked to the clients every day. Because they know exactly, like they know the, the basically the most impactful actions that you need to take to you know, help our clients, help our solutions be more successful. And what I found was when I sat on the floor for, I still sit on the floor, um, I find that I come up with golden nuggets all the time that I can basically build into our prediction models that just make it even more and more accurate at the moment. Like right now, we sit on an 80% kind of accuracy rate, which is absolutely phenomenal. You know, and the other 20% is essentially because of relationship, like I mean, so sometimes you will have uh, clients that, you know, basically they buy it for an unknown reason. And so they feel, you know, that they're hitting that expectation. But us at LinkedIn, we're saying, listen, you can get a lot more out of it. Um, but that 20% is basically due to the um, relationship. Um, so back to this again. So you've got your OR studio, and then we have the data visual visual visualization. Um, and so we use high charts. So that's basically PhD and JavaScript. And we use Tableau. Um, and so that all comes together for the one-stop shop, which is our CS solution, uh, which you have seen. Uh, there's a lot of work there. There's a lot of different data systems. There is crams and errors and days of data in there. And it all comes up to this meaningful solution that actually saves a lot of time and makes a lot of people happy and results in a lot of people getting the jobs they want. Um, so just talking about our architecture components. Um, so um, scalable, so as I said, we spoke about Kafka, uh, Hadoop, and Teradata. Uh, the easy to use, so we've got Tableau and uh, High Charts, which is an internal tool, so using Java and, uh, JavaScript and HTML. And then Efficient. So Phoenix, by the way, is an internal tool that we use. Essentially, it is uh, microservices. Um, and there's the running joke of the flying elephant, uh, fast, scalable, and a lot of data running in one direction. Um, so um, putting everything together, so essentially, like to mean our uh, architecture, uh, we are really focused on the scalable data systems that are easy to use and that are efficient. Um, and as I said, like ultimately, it's it's making those apps like the CS solution um, that are basically fast and scalable. Um, so to kind of go back to the CS solution, um, 
it's really important to highlight, like you mean, so there's a lot of us here that will, and you know, it's been highlighted today that you know, we'll work with data, we'll come up with amazing insights, and then they're kind of just forgotten about. Um, the thing is, this one is continuing to drive impact. You know, as I said, it's made such an impact on EMEA that we are pushing forward. Uh, the fact that we can say that there's like solid success, that we can actually see the impact is just phenomenal. And there's just more people getting involved all the time to kind of make this better, make it stronger and more scalable. Um, so as I said, the 12,000 downloads, 300% lift in client help detection. Um, and so then, yes, yeah, so the 1,400 users. And then, as I said, when you use this tool, you are 26% more successful with your client base. Um, so if I kind of go to this full project um, over, as I said, the last six to eight months, and I think I, I've been in two situations. Um, so in my early career, um, basically, when you have a strong understanding of a business uh, as a sales analyst, because you do, like, I mean, you're, you're, you're with people that deal with our clients all the time. When you're on that sales floor, you understand how the company breathes, how it flows. Uh, you, you know all the different data points that would be so impactful to have. Uh, and when I was a sales analyst, um, I didn't have the resources. So uh, basically, I had very few, I, at the time, we didn't even have Teradata, like I mean, so other analysts did, I didn't. Um, and so we used to leverage off internal tools. Uh, and so it was kind of one of those things where, you know, it was just begging to have those resources, having that data there to actually make an impact. But I've also seen people, and I have a lot of friends that are data scientists in the other end, that have access to the most amazing things. Um, so as I said, m the course that I did, um, there were 26 data scientists graduated, and of those, I think about 10 of them are in a job where basically they're put in a room with a big screen, a lot of data, and they just have to figure things out and make a tool that saves money. And it's just so vague. Um, and the thing is, like, I mean, when they don't have that key understanding of the business, it, it makes things a lot slower, takes a lot more time, and then the impact is never guaranteed. But the one thing, as I said, that I learned from this was that when you kind of mix a deep understanding of the business with access to big data, uh, you can make an unstoppable impact. Um, and that's, you know, it's, it's just become so clear. Um, like right now, the CS solution, as I said, you know, this started in our Dublin office, uh, myself, Jeff, a couple of others, uh, you know, six to eight months ago, and now it's gone completely global. I'm traveling all over the world to teach people how to use it. Um, and and I'm all, everyone wants to, to, to use it because it helps, like, I mean, if you talk about LinkedIn, you know, we, we, want, we want to share, we, we want to make sure that everyone has a chance to have op an opportunity. And so this does, th this does just that. Like, I mean, it makes our clients more successful, which fund fundamentally helps people find opportunities. Um, so basically, that's it for me and the CS solution. Um, you know, um, I'm not, I have a couple of questions. Um, but I hope that kind of, you know, s sits with a couple of you, like, I mean, you can kind of see similar things, but filling that full circle, like, the most important thing about this project is it actually creates actions, you know, so we actually have, it, it directs the right person in our team to work on the right solution to take care of a client's issue to make them more successful. Uh, and it's just, it, as I said, it saved a lot of man errors, and it's just kind of pushing, it's empowering our clients to be more successful. Um, so, and also just one other thing, uh, just want to thank Gorn for kind of, uh, Gorn and team for setting this up, uh, absolutely fantastic event, um, I've been here all day, my mouth down, uh, which is some of the presentations, so, uh, yeah, thank you.